Right, now I'm recording. Okay, so today we're going to go through how to wash the flow cell. So once you've run um, a sample on the flow cell, if you're only running it for say a couple of hours because you just want to know what species you've got for instance, um, there's going to be active pores left on the flow cell. Um, so what you can do is wash it um, and then add storage buffer back to it, which is the yellow stuff that it comes in, um, and then you should be able to use it again. So you can make up um, the buffers to clean it, but I think you can only get the storage solution from Nanopore. Um, so they all come together in this flow cell wash kit. Um, so you have buffer A and buffer B, and then the storage buffer. Um, so buffer A and B is what you add first, and that's what cleans um, the flow cell. So it's got, um, I guess, DNAs and RNAs in it. Um, and that removes all of your previous sample from um, from the flow cell so that you can you can start again. So what you need to do is um, add in a in a separate tube, you add 20 microliters of A and 380 microliters of B to a tube which makes up um, 400. Um, and then into the priming port, so this one back here, um, you need to add that 400. So um, I'm just going to go through and check that there's no air bubbles because of course this is still important so I'm just going to suck up a little bit and get rid of it and then I'm going to take my 400 microliters my 400 microliters and then do the same as if you were loading um, or priming a port for the first time so you make a bubble and then you push that through there. So that 400 microliters um, that needs to sit on the flow cell for at least 10 minutes, but ideally sort of an hour or so, and that will break down, as I say, the um, original flow um, flow cell sample that you had on it before. Um, and that's just at room temperature, so you can just leave it there um, as it is. Uh, so yes. Lindsay, you said we can leave it for up to an hour? Yes. So you can leave it okay. for at least 10 minutes, um, but ideally longer. So I think you can leave it for, um, yeah, for, for an hour sort of ideally, because the longer you leave it on, the more it will break down your old sample. So you do have to kind of take into account that if you are running a sample again, or rather a new sample on your flow cell, that there may be the chance that if you don't leave it on for long enough, you might get sort of um, some DNA from the old sample going through. So if you do get, if you know that you ran say an E. coli on your old sample um, and you happen to get some small strands of E. coli on your second run, but you know that you're only sampling Pseudomonas for instance, then it's likely because it's kind of left over from the original sample. So the longer you leave this um, buffer solution on, the better because it should hopefully break down as much of that DNA as possible. Thank you. So we will pretend that we have left this for an hour. Um, and so what I'm now going to do, so if you want to run another um, set of samples straight away, you could then proceed to the um, flow cell priming part of your sequencing protocol and loads new sample on. But if you want to store your flow cell, then you need to immediately add um, the storage buffer um, to protect the, the active pores and then you can store it in the fridge as you would do a new flow cell. Um, so one thing to note is um, you need to do this straight after you've finished running a sample. So you can't kind of leave any sample on the flow cell after a run, leave it for say a day and then come back and wash it because it will kind of destroy the pores. So you need to ideally do this um, and wash it straight after you've done a run. As I say, you could then run straight away after that, but you can also, as I say, add this storage buffer and then you can save it for another day. It's definitely worthwhile QCing your flow cell once you've done it though, because um, ideally you should have a certain amount of, of cells um, of pause rather to to do a next um, another run so it's definitely worth once you've done it um, just checking that you've got a decent number of, of pause so 
So I'm going to say this has been sitting here for an hour and that I definitely destroyed all of my uh, my old sample DNA. Um, so I'm just going to go now on to doing the storage buffer section. So again, I'm just going to make sure that I've got liquid. And this time you're adding 500 microliters of the storage buffer, um, which is yellow. So this, this isn't actually storage buffer because I don't want to waste it on my run. This is uh, food dye, <laughs> so it might be a little bit more yellow than it should be. Um, but it's just the same principle basically where you have to put your blob on and then gently load it. And you should see that it starts to go yellow because you're pushing it right through. And so you just need to load your 500 microliters into the flow cell. And that's pretty much it. So your flow cell now can be stored. Uh, yeah, I would QC it before you store it and then it can be stored for however long until your next run. So um, yeah, the wash is, is, is quite easy. You just, uh, so as I say, you can make the two buffers A and B up and there's a protocol for it on the um, community pages. I'll see if I can find a link. Uh, but I think you do have to buy the actual storage buffer. Um, so. The kit, the wash kit isn't particularly expensive, so it's probably just easier if you're buying nanopore stuff anyway, sorry, just to buy a wash I kit. Have a question, please. Of course. I can't, I can't hear you. <laughs> sorry, I have a question. Yes, do yes, ma'am. Do we need to use this, this is, yeah, do, you, do we need to use this flow cell within the three days after storing, or we can store it uh, for as long as we need? Yeah, so I, I don't know how, whether using it on a run and then uh, washing it and storing it, whether that has an effect on the sort of storage afterwards, because obviously with a new flow cell, it lasts, it, well, their guarantee is three months, but actually they last far longer yes, than that. Yes, yes. Um, so I imagine yeah. as long as you have the storage buffer in it, it's probably, it won't degrade, I wouldn't have thought, but I, I don't actually know how long... Um, you can leave it for but I know that some people have done up to sort of four or five washes on a single flow cell um, and it's still been kind of okay it still had active pores to use so it kind of depends really on what it is you're doing in the first place if um, if you're doing say you want whole genome sequencing and you want a really good coverage because you're looking for sort of single poly uh, single nucleotide polymorphisms then you are gonna ideally want to run your sample for the whole 48 hours to get that really good coverage. If you're just looking to see, say, in a sputum sample, what happens to be in there in terms of bacterial species, um, then you can run it for sort of two hours or so, and you should have the amount of data you need just to identify, oh, this is E. coli, oh, this is, you know, whatever. So if you're only running it for a really short period of time, um, and you're doing that sort of over and over again, then you should I guess it depends really, but in theory, you should be able to get quite a few uses out of a flow cell. Um, but obviously the number of pores you get each time will go down. So if you start with, I don't know, 1,500 and you only, you run it for two hours, it might go down to, I don't know, 1,300 and then it will go down again and again and again until it's kind of unusable. But I guess that's up to you, depending on how confident you feel in A, that you don't have any sample left over from the previous runs and B, also how many active pores you've got and how many you need to achieve what it is you want to achieve. Lindsay, just one last thing. Um, yeah. So aren't we also supposed to drain the waste port? Yes, yeah, so you can do that. So I did that just okay. before, but I can show you how to do it if you like. Okay, yes, thank you. Yeah, let me just put my... Yes, you are right, John. So you'll find when you, yes, when you add more buffer, more and more buffer, it will start to move around this waste channel. So there's a hole, a pore here, and then there's a hole at the other end. And if you suck stuff out, oops, <laughs> if you suck stuff out of the final hole, you'll see that it doesn't disturb the rest of the flow cell. So it's best to just suck it up out of this final end and it will all come out and it won't then, you don't need to worry about pushing air across this panel. See, I didn't know that, thank you. Yeah. 
So what you need to, I mean, this time you can use the plunger, for instance, it's not so much of a problem because if you push air in, it doesn't really matter. It won't, I think this is kind of like a, I don't know, like a stop siphon. So it stops you pushing air backwards. You can only really push it in it. So you saw there, it kind of burst out. You should only be able to suck air out and push it into this wiggly waste channel rather than pushing it across the, the main core. Yeah, thanks so much. Yeah, you can use the plunger to do that because it, it's not so uh, delicate. Does that all make sense? Yeah, yeah. If you do happen to have a, a bubble by the yeah. panel next to the spot on section after you've put in the storage buffer, how yeah. best do you resolve that issue? Do you go to the other waste port hole to um, remove the, the, excess, the excess buffer from there? Or do you go back to the same port that you used to put in the buffer and try and remove the air bubble from there? How would you resolve it? So if you have an air bubble, so sometimes if you run a flow cell, especially for a long period, you do start to get little air bubbles. I think if there are air bu bubbles in your sort of flow cell, it's best to just do everything really gently. You can't, it's quite difficult to dislodge the air bubbles from where they are. The only thing you're likely to do is push them further across the, the panel. And obviously you don't want to do that because you destroy all of the pores, you know, along the way. So if you get at any point really, if you get an air bubble, I think the best bet is just to be really, really gentle when you add liquids, whichever they are, storage buffer, um, wash buffer or um, sequencing buffer, and just to push it in really gently so that you don't move the bubble uh, and just kind of keep it in place because if there's a bubble there, you've already destroyed the pores underneath it. So you just need to try and um, damage limitation basically <laughs> to keep it where it is. Um, but if you remove, anything from this end it doesn't matter it won't affect where the bubble is in there you can only really affect the bubble by pushing more air or liquid through the priming port or if you kind of push stuff right in into the spot on hole does that is does that answer your question yes it does thank you great so yeah but um removing waste is is quite easy because you can't really go too wrong with that <laughs> 